Hey folks, welcome to Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. I'm gonna try some strawberries. You can grow strawberries virtually anywhere in North America, but you've got to make sure that you've got the right type of strawberry plant. Uh, just like you've got determinate and indeterminate tomatoes and potatoes and you've got different kinds of onions, long day, short day. Strawberries come in three main varieties. The first variety you, you have is the spring bearing varieties. These are also uh, called short day varieties. And these are planted in my area in zone 9A. We plant those in the fall. I think these are short day spring bearing varieties. The label doesn't give me any information. It just says Fragaria SP. So that's not a variety. Uh, that's, a, that's a species. So I don't really know, but in my area, uh, they put out these plants that are appropriate for our growing season. The local grocery store, HEB here, they're very good at selecting varieties that tend to do well and they show up in the stores at the right time. The other variety is the ever bearing variety. Um, let's go back to the spring bearing variety. They, if planted in the fall, they will bear fruit in um, late February to May and sometimes a little bit later. Uh, they generally bear their fruit within a two week period all at once and um, that's probably what I've got here. Uh, I don't have ever bearing varieties. Ever bearing varieties flower when day length is over 12 hours and they're really in Texas only suitable for commercial greenhouse growing which is not what we're doing here. There are also day neutral varieties. Day neutral varieties are insensitive to the length of the day. It doesn't matter how much light. Uh, they will flower and form runners from 35 degrees Fahrenheit to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. But after that, when it gets hotter, they shut down. That means, you know, uh, the, the mid spring here is 80 and hotter, maybe a little bit later in this in the spring. You're not going to get any strawberries from those, but they will form and flower uh, when in that temperature range from 35 degrees to 80 degrees. Therefore, uh, I might even have this variety, this day neutral variety. I'm not sure. But what I know is that I don't have an ever bearing. I probably have a spring bearing short day and that's suitable for my area. They will survive frosts very well. And uh, unless we get a really hard freeze, then we can look forward to some strawberries coming up in uh, the, the spring. So I figure since the strawberry starts at the local grocery store, looks so nice that I'd buy some and plug them in here to my berry bed, this uh, raised bed here. Got this nice uh, blackberry, this thorn thornless blackberry uh, growing here in a pot. I've got some um, goji berries and well, I'm going to plug in a couple of strawberry plants just to see how they do over the winter. Scrape away this mess here. Now this was a hugel culture bed and it's settled about six inches and it's growing this berry bush really well. I had a lot of pollinator attractors in here a lot of flowers and I'm sure I'm gonna get some of those coming up in the spring they dropped a lot of seed in here this is a very loose soil strawberries actually do prefer sandy soil I've got some sand in here as uh, maybe you can see I don't know can you see it's kind of a sandy soil so this ought to be ideal for these strawberry plants so we're just just gonna plug them in and see what happens Fresh strawberries are hard to beat, but man, when you buy them at the store, they're so expensive. But when you go to the farm and you get a couple of buckets full of strawberries on the U-Pick farm and you bring them back to weigh them and cash out, wow, expensive. So I'm gonna put a few plants in here and see what they do. We will try to plant two of these here. I've got another space where I could put some strawberries in. Maybe I'll try that as well. In fact, it's the bed we just emptied of sweet potatoes. I don't know if I'm going to be able to plant right here just yet. There are fire ants right here. Yep, fire ant mound. I'm going to have to get the orange oil. Let me mix up some orange oil. I'll be using this orange oil to kill the fire ants. And you mix it two to four ounces to a gallon spray it on and it'll start killing them on contact. I'm just going to saturate this area with orange oil. Orange oil, as they say, is biodegradable. 
it shouldn't affect the plants too much once we put them in. Let's get these ants knocked out. I do like to add a little bit of dish soap. It's an emulsifier to help get that oil mixed with the water. All right, here we go. Just start spraying it down and turning it over. You can see them moving down in there. Maybe you can. They're just where I want to plant, right here in the middle of where I want to plant. Good thing about orange oil is it has a nice pleasant smell. It's not like spraying chemicals. Orange oil is toxic to dogs in quantity. You know, if they just get a sniff of it or a couple of licks of it, it's not going to hurt them. But you don't want to leave this stuff out where your dogs can drink it if they like that kind of stuff. Yeah. Nice. Everybody dies. Well, it's the next day. And it does appear that the orange oil will have an adverse effect if you let it pool up on the leaves of at least some plants, including this uh, thornless blackberry. But, uh, yeah, well, we tried it, we tested. I don't see any signs of ants down in here. So, we've either killed them or driven them away, and our strawberries are, well, looking like strawberries. What you doing, huh? You having a good day? Yes, ma'am. Good girl. I have this uh, Tupperware. This container was given to me by a friend. I drilled some holes in it. I put a bunch of depleted potting mix in here. All this is very loose and you can see we grew sweet potatoes in there and just harvested these sweet potatoes yesterday. This is very loose soil but uh, I'd like to raise it up a bit, just a little bit, and put some nutrition in there. So I'm going to drop in a bag of, uh, of commercial potting mix in here just to ensure that uh, we've got some nutrition in here. Um, I don't have a lot of compost and what compost I do have I'm saving for my spring garden so I'm not going to top this off with my own compost. So let's get this mixed up real good. Yeah this is wet stuff and sitting in my wagon for a few weeks. All right. Wet and stinky. This stuff around incorporated into that potting mix all right just like before we're gonna make a hole about the same size as the root ball and this isn't just peat moss it's very very light it breaks apart real easy so we want to try to just drop it in there without disturbing anything too much see how that just comes right out the only thing holding this together are those very fine roots so we'll just very gently place it in there and backfill. This is a very fine mix now that we've added some fresh potting soil to it but it was already very fine beforehand because it was just potting soil from uh, various potted projects that had uh, seen their time come and go so all of this is recycled except that bag we just put in today. These plants prefer a soil that's well draining. It's got to be well draining. Uh, they can't sit in water. Uh, in fact, almost every study that I've read that talks about growing these says you probably should mound up some soil and it, it should be a nice sandy loam. That's ideal. Well, I, don't, I have a sandy loam over in that other container that we planted, but this is just potting mix, but it's super well draining and it is raised up and drains well. No water sits in here. So I'm gonna try in this uh, potting mix that we've amended um, to put in three plants. And so I've already planted one of those. I'm gonna put the other two in and hopefully this will be a nice little strawberry bed. Lots of roots on that one. We'll just drop it in. Watering in your plants will help that soil settle down a, a, around the roots. These plants were felt fairly well moistened when I brought them home. But I want them to settle in here to their new home. So we'll give them a pretty good dose of water. There we go. Yeah, not seeing any more ants. It's only been about 15 minutes. There's a few stragglers I'm noticing. But they're not looking real good. 
So we have three plants in that tub. I put two plants in this uh, big pot right here, right next to my electric daisies. And we've got our plants over here in the berry, the berry bin. What should we call it? The berry corner? Yeah. The goji berries were planted here temporarily in that pot. And they have since put roots down out the holes. So I think I'm going to have to cut that pot away from around these berries and just let them grow here. And keep pruning them back each year. They're blossoming right now. I don't see any fruits forming. But this thing has taken off this fall. Doing really good. Build a little trellis here for them. We'll see if they can grow here. I can also take cuttings from these goji berries and establish them elsewhere. Well, that's how we're going to do our strawberries this year. Uh, we've did a done a little bit of research. I've never grown these before, but from my research, from what I can tell, this should be successful. Please follow along on our channel if you want to see if we can grow strawberries through the winter here in Zone 9A on the Texas coast. And all these little projects that we're doing, these strawberry projects, the, the sweet potatoes that we just wrapped up, my winter garden, I'll be updating you throughout the winter. And uh, yeah, please subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Hey, thanks for joining us today. We'll talk to you next time. Happy gardening to you. Bye-bye.